All right, so first taking a look at the clock here, the large chip on the bottom is the All Spectrum Electronics Nixie Tube clock chip. Now I know that this is not a Nixie Tube clock, however, this uh, clock chip outputs to BCD. And the reason why that's important is because I could use BCD drivers for LED displays to run the small clock, but that's also what I'm using to run the large clock, and I'll show that in just a moment. Now this here, this is a super capacitor, so that way this has about an eight hour battery backup in case power fails. And this is a temperature compensated crystal oscillator, so the clock will be accurate to around six seconds per year, which is very, very nice. Now the clock has a lot of features that can be accessed using these two buttons over here. This is the reset button next to the clock in case the clock is having some issues. Uh, and then this is set in advance. So this switch here actually turns the display on and off because you don't want to have this display on all the time. Plus, I don't have these driven correctly. When I ordered them, I was under the assumption that they can be run directly with 5 volts because on Mauser Electronics it was shown as having a forward voltage of 5. But that ended up being wrong, so I just had some resistors thrown together that I found. And so this actually runs a little hotter than it should. The small display is using like 4 watts, which is far too much for just these few displays. But anyway, the purpose of the green blinking LED is just to show you that the clock is actually working. Now, this is powered by a PC power supply, which is at the end of the clock here. And the PC power supply, I use that because I need a lot of 12 volt power to power the LED strips themselves. And also I can get five volt power for all the ICs. Now, the way that I was able to duplicate the large display or duplicate the clock to a large display is through these driver chips that I made. Now this is another LED driver chip right here, but instead of driving LED, LEDs, they're driving these read relays. Now these read relays can each drive about 10 watts and they only consume 10 milliamps. So this was very, very light relays that are able to power one segment of the clock very easily. Uh, the red LED is to show you that power is on to the clock because if you have the display turned off for the remote, because this is actually the controller for the LEDs themselves, if you have it turned off through the remote, you want to know that the power supply is still running, so that's why they all have this red LED. But so each of these drivers has plus 5 volts in ground as well as the BCD input for the chip. So the BCD controls which of these relays are on and the relays represent the segments of the display A through F or A through G. So zooming out a little bit, this is how the displays are actually wired. These uh, LED strips have four wires that need to be connected and you can see here, let me try and focus, we have plus 12 volts B, R, and G. So what I did was I connected B, R, and G across through all the strips so if you follow around I just made basically like an E pattern because they're all common. And the only thing that is controlled is plus 12 volts. So you can see that each of the segments have plus 12 volts wired and they go to the controllers. So what's happening here is from the controller for the LEDs, all of the displays are always wired to the grounds, which are B, R, and G. And so they're always together if you were to take the continuity of this point of B from here to any of the other numbers, you would find that there is continuity. But 12 volts is always going through these relays. So 12 volts is common through these controllers, but not through the displays. So when these relays are active, that actually sends 12 volts to each of the segments, and that's how I got it to work. So when you turn the display on, this switch here grounds the power feed for the computer power supply, which actually tells it to turn on. So at the moment, the clock is running on 5 volt standby power. That's why the power supply is not making any noise. But when you turn that switch, the power supply comes on, and now we're getting 12 volts for each of the numbers and also 5 volts for their drivers. Now this is on the color changing mode, which is generally what I leave it on. And you can hear the power supply running, but also you can actually hear the relays. It's kind of faint, 
but it's interesting because it actually means the clock does tick. But I'll turn the display back off. So the way that I constructed this, it's on two three foot by five foot sanded plywood boards and they've been painted black. Now in order to make this clock a little less cumbersome, the pieces are joined together by these little clasps, which actually end up not being important because this is screwed directly to the wall. But so that way it can be taken apart. Everything that needs to be communicated to the left side is just through this one connector. This is a PC power supply extension cable and it had enough wires, so I just used it. So what needed to be carried over was plus five volts, plus 12 volts ground, and then the BCD inputs for the first three digits. And all that could be, gone to, could be put through that one connector, so that's just how I did it. So in essence, the clock is only on the right half of the, dis of the clock itself, but the left half is sort of like a dummy clock. If it was not connected to the right side, it would do absolutely nothing, just because that's the way it is. So the reason why I decided to put these tinted glass panels over it is because there's really no clean way to make the numbers look nice. The wires are just kind of all over the place and I use black wires so that way they're least visible under the tinted glass. But I think also these LEDs are much brighter than you would want to comfortably look at. Uh, when I first put this up on the wall without the tinted glass, this would light up the room incredibly well. So the tinted glass was also kind of a necessity. But the other thing is when you can see the segments of the clock, it makes it a lot harder to read because, I mean, when you're looking at it from a distance, they are all eights. And so just because you have it lit up makes, it's not as big as a contrast. So for instance, if I put it back on, it just, it's not so easy to read. It looks easier to read on my phone than in person, but for one thing, also, I mean, this clock is enormous, so you have to be somewhat far away from it to actually be readable. Which is why I installed the small display in the first place, because you would want to be able to see a small display like this in order to set the clock. But anyway, that's basically how I built this clock. Also, the way the glass is held on, if you couldn't already tell, I just have these wooden pegs with threaded rods that are at both ends. Uh, I didn't have, our drill press does not go through all of it because these need to be slightly more than four inches and the drill press will only go two inches. So it's not a continuous threaded rod, it's two pieces. And there's holes in the plexiglass and they just go on here and get bolted on. And the plexiglass itself, that is simply tinted with privacy window film. I got that on Amazon and it works just great. So anyway, that's how I built the clock, and I hope you enjoyed this little explanatory video.